Hey everyone, I'm Sophie from France. If you think you've had some misfortune in love, well, I promise my story will make you think your romantic life isn't so bad. But first, please like and subscribe. I was born in a super rich family, and our mansion by the beach looks like a fairy tale castle. I used to play hide and seek in the garden maze with our maids, and my dad bought me a stunning white pony, which I rode all over the huge grounds. Princess, your smile lights up my world, and I will never let you down. He lied, big time. When I was in fourth grade, his company was accused of financial fraud. Dad managed to avoid being jailed, but we lost everything. My pony was sold, and we moved to an ordinary house in an average neighborhood. After that, my parents argued every single day, and soon, they got divorced. Dad left us and never looked back. He never even sent a card on my birthday. Mom started a new life and started dating another man. I had no choice but to move on too, and I quickly made friends with kids in my new neighborhood. Although I enjoyed playing with them, I struggled to come up with ideas for games, so I preferred to follow the rest. One of the kids, Tom, was a natural leader. He often told us what to do, playing an admiral, a king, or even my future husband. Sophie, when we grow up, you will marry me. Um, okay. We all played outside till it was dark, and Tom often walked me back home, which was sweet. But over time, his behavior started to get strange. Like once when he had to go visit his grandma for a week, he told me not to play with anyone else while he was gone. We were also in the same class at school, and I loved making friends and joking around with everyone, but it seemed to bother Tom a lot. Sophie, stop being so friendly with everyone. It's annoying. Nobody seems annoyed except you, Tom. In middle school, a cute boy sent me a card on Valentine's Day saying, you brightened my day, and it made me so happy. But the next day, when I tried giving him a chocolate, he ran away terrified, like he'd seen a ghost. Of course, Tom was behind this. I was getting sick sick of him, and even tried creating distance between us, but he didn't take the hint. If I didn't walk with him to school, he just followed me. He'd turn up at my house whenever he pleased, and if I didn't talk to him, he'd just sit in my room for hours watching me. I told mom not to let him in anymore, but she always said he was the sweetest friend I had. Once in high school, I decided to sneak out to a party late at night, but I was more worried about keeping it a secret from Tom than my own mother. Thankfully, I didn't encounter him on the way, and I was ready to have fun. But every single boy I asked to dance with with me turned me down. Okay, can someone please explain what's going on? I'm pretty and cool and yeah, pretty. Why don't you boys want to dance with me? Because your boyfriend isn't gonna like it. I followed his sideway glance to see freaking Tom watching me from a corner. Tom, are you stalking me? And stop telling people you're my boyfriend. It's dangerous for you to be out alone so late, so of course I followed you. And I never said I'm your boyfriend, I'm your fiance. You accepted my proposal, remember? We were nine years old. Listen, we are not dating or engaged and I don't need your protection. You need to back off, I'm warning you. I should have stopped this nonsense a long time ago. But to be honest, I was a bit scared of Tom. But now, I really needed to send him a clear message that I was not his property. So the next day, I asked the strongest guy in school to date me. It started out well, but on the third day, my boyfriend disappeared. He broke up with me on the phone and didn't come to school. And soon, I heard he'd left the city. Now, I was officially untouchable. Although I was furious with Tom, I still cared about him and he obviously needed help. Listen, Tom, you're my friend, and I think you really need therapy. You seem to be obsessed with me. No, I'm not crazy. Does being in love seem like madness to you? It's not love, it's an obsession. But he didn't seem to get it, and I didn't know what to do anymore. Fortunately, Mom offered a temporary escape. Sophie, we've been invited to vacation anytime at this beautiful villa owned by the son of an old friend. How about we go away now? It could be a nice break. I was only too happy to accept. The owner of the villa, Pierre, seemed to be only five to six years older than me. He'd inherited his father's business and was already a millionaire. As soon as he saw us, he smiled brightly and his gaze was fixed on me. I felt myself blush. Pierre was a really charming gentleman. We spent the whole day together enjoying his amazing place. He revealed to me that a year ago, he'd been in a terrible accident that had caused him amnesia. I couldn't even remember my parents' names, and I felt so lost. It was a really dark time, and I... I zoned out as the wheels in my brain started turning. Amnesia. Yes, this could be the perfect solution for getting rid of Tom. Well, I'm glad you're fine now, but on the upside, it must have been good to forget bad things. Oh, trust me, there's nothing good about it, and it took a while to recover. 
Maybe faking amnesia was a bad idea, but it was the only shot I had at getting my life back. So the next day, I was busy looking for an opportunity to fall and act like I had amnesia. And it presented itself when Tom suggested that we go horse riding. I chose the wildest horse, named Terror. We went riding along the coast and watched a lovely sunset. I knew we'd be heading back soon, and I had to execute my plan now. I haven't ridden a horse in years. I remember I visited once, and you had the loveliest ivory pony. My Moo Moo. Yeah, my parents had to sell it. That's a shame. You loved it so much. I was trying to force Terror to rear up, but this horse was just not listening to me. Sometimes that life just feels like it was all a dream. But you can return to this dream, Sophie, if you want. What? Just then, the horse reared up, and I let go of the reins and fell to the ground. The world spun around me. The last thing I saw was Pierre's worried face before I blacked out. When I opened my eyes again, I found myself lying in a hospital bed. How do you feel? I… I, I don't know. What happened? Where am I? Where's Mumu? Yeah, so I pretended that I didn't remember life after I was six. I didn't remember getting poor, or dad leaving us, or any of my childhood friends, including Tom. My fall was an accident, but Pierre blamed himself for letting me ride that unruly horse. He begged us to stay at his villa so I could recover in peace, and mom and I were pretty thrilled at the idea. Pretending to have amnesia, I acted like a child the first few days, which was quite funny. I did all sorts of silly things, like hiding in the garden and asking Pierre to find me, then jumping out and scaring him. I even drew a mustache on his face while he was sleeping. Pierre was dedicated to helping me recover my memory and did all sorts of mental exercises with me. And he pampered me a lot. He had his cooks make my favorite meals, took me to his private cinema often, and bought me anything I wanted at the mall. And I really got to know him better. His eyes lit up when he talked about how his company was helping build schools for kids in Africa, where he went often. Pierre was the complete opposite of Tom. He was kind and gentle, and being around him him, I felt safe, and I knew I was really falling for him. But the guilt of lying about my amnesia was eating away at me. I'd have to tell him the truth eventually, but would he forgive me? A few weeks later, the doctor said I seemed well, but my memory would take time to return. I'd already missed a lot of school, so mom and I decided to go back. Pierre had to deal with some business abroad, but he promised to visit us soon. And when we got home, Tom appeared at our door in five minutes. Where have you been? Why did you leave without saying a word? How could you not reply to me? Are you sure you're at the right house? Who are you? Huh? What is this dumb game, Sophie? Mom told him everything about my amnesia, and Tom was shocked. Then he got angry and refused to believe Mom, but she firmly told him not to stress me out and leave our house. The next day at school, everyone found out about my amnesia and asked me stupid questions, like if I still remembered how to read or write. Tom followed me around watching me, but he didn't say a word. But that afternoon, as I headed out of school, he confronted me. Enough of this nonsense, Sophie. I'm not buying your stupid act. Look, I'm sorry if you were someone important to me, but I really don't remember you. I'm sorry. How, how could you forget me? I've loved you since we were nine. I, I've been by your side every day since. How could all that just disappear? No, I refuse to accept that. I'll remind you of every memory till it comes back to you. He grabbed me by the arms and I started to panic. Leave me alone. Just let me be. Help. Someone please help me. Some people watching the whole scene called the police and the police ordered a restraining order against Tom. My plan had worked. I felt both relieved and guilty. I knew I'd gone too far, but it was the only way. After that, Tom kept his distance, but I could still feel his eyes on me from the shadows. My only hope was to graduate and leave this place and Tom behind soon. For good. A few weeks passed, and I was already missing Pierre a lot. I texted him several times, but he didn't answer. Maybe he was just really busy. Or maybe I'd misread some signs, and he didn't feel the same way about me. I was looking for something to occupy myself, and decided to sign up as a volunteer with some friends at the Nice Carnival, a major music event raising funds for charity. As soon as we were done setting up the sound system on the stage, the announcer stepped up to the mic. Before we start the performances, I'd like everyone to welcome up our generous sponsor, who's made this event possible and donated 10 million to our purpose. Give him a great round of applause, Mr. Pierre with his lovely fiance Beth. My heart sank to my toes when I saw Pierre step on stage with a beautiful brunette on his arm. As he spoke a few words, I couldn't stop staring at them. Not even a girlfriend, a fiancé. Just then our eyes met, and it hurt to realize how deeply I was in love with Pierre. I quickly turned away and started to run. When I was far enough, I sat on some porch and just cried. I had no right to be mad at Pierre since I was a liar, and he never said he loved me. But I still felt betrayed.
Sophie, can I sit near you? <sighs> yes, Tom. That guy on stage? I saw how you looked at him. You're in love with him, aren't you? Suddenly, I just broke down and told him everything. How I'd been scared of him and faked my amnesia. Tom, I never said you were crazy, but your behavior isn't okay, and you made me feel suffocated. I know I've been a little intense, but it's only because I care about you so much, Sophie. I've loved you since the first time I met you. But caring about someone doesn't mean not respecting their boundaries, and you can't force someone to love you back. You can't hold on to an obsession for years and expect it to turn into a healthy relationship. I know you're right, but I don't know what to do, Soph. I can't help how I feel. That's why I think therapy could help you, Tom. You really deserve to be happy, but it can't be at the expense of someone else's well-being. You need to learn to let go and move on. Tom promised that he'd try therapy, and I felt like someday we could be friends again. Pierre's calls and texts were endless, but I refused to answer them. But one day, a strange sound caught my attention. It was a helicopter landing in the fields behind our house, and Pierre came out of it. What are you doing here, Pierre? Fighting for the love of my life. That's you, in case it wasn't clear. Those are strange words for a man with a fiancé. Please, I just need a few minutes to explain. Pierre then told me that his dad had laid a condition on him to find a girl to marry before he could take over the family business. So Pierre had proposed to a girl he wasn't in love with just to please his father. But the pressure to settle on a date for marriage had been too much for him, and he'd escaped to his family villa for a break. That's when I met you, Sophie, and everything changed. I realized that I'd made a huge mistake. When you left, I went back and ended things with my ex-fiancé. We had committed to the nice carnival as a couple, so we decided to go through with it together. I know I should have answered your texts or told you earlier, but I was scared of losing you. I wanted to explain everything after it was over. Pierre, I don't know what to say. Say you'll forgive me, Sophie, and give me a chance to make it up to you. Before that, I need to tell you something too, and you may not want to talk to me after this. I told him the plain truth about Tom and my fake amnesia. The worst part is that I knew you really suffered because of amnesia, and faking it was completely out of line.